Hey everyone, welcome back to the Growing Together podcast with me, Sunny Vasquez. And me, Cesar Santos. A podcast where we talk about everything under the sun related to growth and your growth journey. Today's episode is about growing into your creativity. This episode idea was actually thought of by Caesar. So I'm going to let him start off and kind of just start off with saying like, you know, how do you think you grew into the creative individual that you are? Just a little backstory too before you start. Um, Caesar's not just super creative, but very analytical and really loves to learn and figure things out. I know that sounds like that's not the best way to describe it, but like he's really great at video editing, you know, sewing, like pretty much anything you task him with, he can figure out. Um, and I think that's due to his willingness to learn, but also just his creative mind. So without further ado, Caesar, let us know, like let us into your journey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, Sonny, for just pushing me right on this one. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, I'd say like everyone's creative journey first off let me just go out and say this uh, i think everyone has the ability to be creative in some way shape or form i think yeah there are people that are born with unique set of skills uh, when it comes to like for example like art you know there's like a word for someone who's like uh who's born with like the, like the ability to just draw or paint really well forget their what's the word um protege protege yeah like there's protege there's people that just like literally like at three years old they're just painting these amazing paintings that like that with techniques that like you know 20 year olds or something like that would mm-hmm. have to learn like art school i get that um but there is ways for you to be creative in in the aspect of you just learning something from like zero from you just like trying to do something whether you know for example a puzzle you know a puzzle is a work of art at the end of the day you didn't create the puzzle but you can put the pieces together to make that work of art and that's the way i've always approached things in life when yeah. it came to me taking cars apart engines putting them back together when i was a young kid i remember uh, we got our computer <laughs> uh, our first computer and i believe i was like in i think like second or third grade actually no i think yeah about second or third grade and um no one was home so <laughs> i what i what i started doing was i went and like you know i turn the computer off and I, I had no access to the internet at the time so like i was just like poking and prodding and like seeing what does what to take the computer apart and i after like an hour and a half i finally figured out how to take the cover off and like and next thing you know like i just disassembled the whole thing and i was being careful because i knew i needed to put it back together and then my mom walked in she's like what are you doing you just broke this like you know three thousand it was like three thousand dollars back and they was like no no i don't know how to put it back together just give me a second um, but it turns out as a kid, I used to do that a lot. Like my mom and dad would buy me toys and I That's would... the same reaction though that I have when you want to take stuff apart. But like you better know how to put it back together because I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's probably literally she, she was freaking out. Like exactly. And it's, it's understandable because like you're like it's obviously something that costs a lot of money and you were young like she had no reason to believe that you could actually put it back together it's much easier to take something apart and um yeah i ended up you know taking it apart putting it back together it was all working fine and the things like that um when you disassemble reassemble that's at least my process i remember taking one of those tests as a kid about what type of learner you are there's like okay there's like kinesthetic there's basically like there's visual i remember learners. that too yeah i don't know if it's true anymore it was like a long time ago i mean i think it's test. still kind of relevant yeah it's, it's kind of irrelevant to yeah. teach to do in school because like they have a pretty standard way of teaching so unless yeah. you seek a different learning type your like the way that you learn better like you're still going to be taught all the same way. oh yeah obviously like when it comes to reading and stuff reading assignments yeah but i was uh i took the test and i was a hands-on learner so and that made so much sense that growing up so much sense. about like you learn with your hands you learn by like manipulating things with your hands or whatever the case is so uh, i'm gonna take that test yeah. now as an adult like after we do this yeah we after do this, it. i'm gonna take this yeah we should do it i mean I, I, I want i kind of want to retake it's been a long time since i took it but yeah, and then just kind of from there, just like long story short, like just I got in the, I got into automotive in high school. Like I loved, I still love working on cars to this day when I get a chance. Um, it's just like that's what I learned to be. That's how I learned to be creative, just by like finding creative solutions to problems, um, trying to figure things out to like, all right, this is the 
goal, like how do we get to that goal with what we have? Like, for example, this podcast, like we wanted to do this and there's a creative way for us to actually record and, ta- and re- to record not only the video, and but also record the audio in the highest quality that we can. I think that brings up a good point because I think you are really good at like also coming up with like creative solutions like when we have issues so when like when we were trying to start this podcast yeah. there's obviously equipment that we needed but also like for instance my camera only can record um video up to 30 minutes and most cameras do because it prevents the camera from overheating your mm-hmm. camera as well so we had to figure out a way to continue the recording without it stopping and you figured it out you're like oh you know if i do this if i record directly into my computer we won't have that issue and like i think that's creative like because some people will just see that as a roadblock but other i think more creative people will see that as an opportunity to figure out something that's gonna work um but i also want to bring up because you brought it up earlier is like you know some people are born with like these skills that are considered creative skills Mm -hmm. um but I think, you know, some people might believe that creativity is, like, innate in you, but I kind of think that it's also taught um, because creativity is so many different things. Like, there's obviously, like, more creative, like, careers, for instance, like, artists, and even what you do is a little bit more creative with, like, video editing and content creation and, like, all that kind of stuff, but um, when I think about, too, like, in my career, like, my, I work in SEO, and SEO is kind of creative in nature because I work with a lot of brands to identify keywords that make sense with their brands and how we can use those keywords in blog articles and like that requires kind of like me to think outside the box sometimes um but also in other parts of my career when I worked in retail I just had to be like a problem solver I had to think about how we could get things done with what we had and like that's a lot of like creative like problem solving and creative solutions so i mean what do you think about that yeah like finding creative solutions and like like for example you're saying in the field that you worked in before even in the field you work in now like i know there's creative solutions that you have to find for certain projects and stuff like that. i think that. it's also that i just work for like a pretty like we're still kind of considered a startup and like when you work in that environment too it has i think you need a lot of creative minds because mm-hmm. everyone sees the world differently everyone sees like problems from different angles which works out really well because then like if i don't have an answer i know someone on my team might have a yeah. solution to it so i think that's cool too is like working ha- creativity is like not the same across people but like i think creativity is different for everyone like it has the same meaning across the board but creativity like for me, what it means to be creative might be different for you, what mm-hmm. it means to be creative. Like, I think it's kind of, like, just different for everyone, you yeah, know? Yeah, no, of course. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, even in different fields that you're working in, you know, like, whether it's... I mean, every, well, everyone, immediately when you think of, oh, are you creative? I don't know what comes to, what comes to your mind. When, when I of, ask that, honestly, yeah. I think so. If you would have asked me, like, maybe five, ten years ago... Um, I probably would have been like, oh, I'm not the most creative individual because I would have thought of like painting or like um, more creative skills. I think mm-hmm. creative skills were seen differently than they are now. Oh, yeah. Now, if you ask me, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm creative because I do a lot of writing and I do a lot of things that require a different like outlook and different perspective. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I think but I also come like have come to the understanding. I think everyone's creative in their own way as about what we put um our efforts into and our passions yeah um but i think creativity like long way ago was like more standardized almost i don't know if that's the right word but um people saw as like oh you're creative if you know how to draw you're creative if you know how to take pictures you're creative if you know how to um sculptures yeah it was more like it literally was more like like just that field yeah. but now like for instance like i feel like there's so many different avenues for people to be creative so mm-hmm. like for instance all the apps and technology we have allow people to kind of learn how to be creative for instance like you work with a lot of the adobe suite so you work with um after effects you work with adobe premiere you've worked with photoshop and like 
you might have not seen yourself as a creative individual before, but like as you learn how to navigate these programs, you're able to kind of unlock that part of your brain too. Yeah, it gives you the tools, uh, the tools necessary. Like oftentimes, like oh, I, I didn't know that this did that. Next thing you know, like you found a better way to like edit a thumbnail or something like that, or or mask out a person in a photo, like these tools definitely have helped uh, and that's then that, that's creative that. like that's a different type of art or even like um like your virtual production like that's mm. creative in a way as well um i will say with those things like for instance um i'm really into graphic design and i want to learn how to be like a better graphic designer i do think so- it comes easier to some people because these programs are very hard to use and like um you know, they take a little bit of time. So I do think some people do just have a knack for like these type of things mm-hmm. because it's like, I almost feel like it's in their DNA. Like I feel like in your DNA, you want to figure out how to use these things. So when you're learning a program, I feel like the learning curve for you isn't as high because like you're, that's just how your mind works. Whereas when I'm trying to learn a certain program, like the way I learn isn't like directly how the program works so like it's it's harder for me like it's not saying i can't but it's definitely like i'm not as like savvy as some other people might be in the beginning you know yeah oh yeah it's uh it's like i said like i was saying in the beginning it was like everyone starts can start being creative by just doing something like learning like from zero so like opening up photoshop it for beginners can be extremely overwhelming i mean like oh it's so overwhelming and there's like just the keys that like like you click something and you something up like that but um yeah i whenever i opened because i have the adobe suite too and like i'm i'm a little i'm a novice video editor but i would love to get into photoshop and um i learned a bit of InDesign when I was in a uh, college class we went over like InDesign and building your like resume portfolio on there um but it was hard so like you know but some other people had a better like knack for it or even yeah. like just knowing what looks good because like I don't know there's taste involved too creativity is very I think creativity can also be very subjective you know yeah that too I mean I mean there are I think if you depending on what who you talk to as a graphic designer there are standards that were like developed that have been developed over time in regards to graphic design and like color and like um this is where like a lot this is actually where art does come into the field of especially like graphic design think of graphics well, even video editing video editing too is like like complementary colors like you don't want to use like a weird text that doesn't end you the person can't even see it because yeah. of the background so like or the video that's playing under uh, 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 the video that's playing underneath it so you have to like kind of like know like oh that doesn't make any sense at all yeah like, visually too so but yeah. yeah yeah i'm more of a person too i think i have good ideas when it comes to a design of like what it should look like but i'm i can't like i can have a vision in my head i have a very hard time carrying out that vision when it comes to like graphics and stuff mm-hmm. like that so um i'm working on that skill But I did want to get into, um, I kind of jotted some notes down too of like how I think you can uncover your creativity. Mm Because again, I think everyone is truly creative. And I think part of what's helped me develop my creativity is that I get to be creative in my career. And, you know, I'm also willing to learn. Like, I think learning is a huge part of uncovering your creativity. Yeah. But... I think the one, like, the main key to uncovering and growing into your creative self is finding out what your passions are. Mm -hmm. And, like, do you think that helped you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we talked about, actually, you know, we talked about passions in a podcast that did not air. It was our our, our test podcast, I believe, right? Yeah, I think so. But, yeah, I mean, like, passions... um, it, they take time to develop, to find out what they are, first of all. Like, I think, for, at least for me, I needed to figure out, I needed to try different things in order to find out what I'm passionate about. Do you think that helped you, like, with your creativity, though? Like, yes. Like, aligning the two? Yeah, it did. It, it has, and uh, and I believe it continue, it'll, it'll continue to. So, like, I, again, like you were saying earlier, have a passion for just learning and doing different things like you're like I'm, i don't know like a knack for i have like a knack for a lot of things in regards to caesar is a jack of all trades, trades which isn't bad because that quote actually goes a jack of all trades is a master of none but far better than a master 
of one. So people often say that like just to go on a little rant here that like it's bad to be a back jack of all trades, but it's actually good to have a wide variety of skills. Maybe you're not an expert, but like you might be able to help some someone like especially for instance if you're working on like with a team of individuals like oh actually like I took a course and I actually know how to do this so I can help you and like just because you're an expert doesn't mean you can't offer assistance. Yeah. So Caesar is a jack of all trades in the best way. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but yeah, no, it uh, it did definitely help me um, from learning like how to develop, you know, soft goods uh, and hard goods in the uh, in the like manufacturing industry. Like I started from just learning how to sew. On That's this, incredible. Like, that you crappy know how to sewing sew. machine, you know, and my neighbor was throwing away. Yeah. So like that to like learning how to use industrial machines to learning how to like, p- develop patterns. I still know that. That's actually one of my passions. I'd say it's just trying to figure out how to make th- that all make sense of what i do now um maybe one of these days i'll make like a video on that but um yeah it's just i feel like it does for sure i think it's yeah. so interesting too like if you ever watch caesar video edit if you ever like he has some tiktoks where he shows you what he does like looking at it from my mind because i'm a novice video editor it's like wow like it's so like it's like his hands aren't part of his body (laughs) he just like (laughs) knows what he's it's crazy um but i think part of it too part of like growing into your creativity is then putting those passions into practice Mm. like for instance for the longest time i've been a writer for as long as i know i love writing i've loved writing since i was a kid i used to hold like a little brat notebook around when i was a kid and just write stories they probably weren't very good at the time but you know you're not great to begin with um but it was something I loved to do, and I honestly didn't know why for the longest time. Um, and I didn't do it as much in high school, but then I got into college, and I was like, I had a lot more time. Well, not a lot more time, but like I also had some classes that required me to do some writing, and I started my blog in college, too. And I learned that as I continued to write and practice like my writing skill it got better like I think I'm far better writer than I was like in high school Mm -hmm. I'm far better writer now than I was in college and that's because I do spend a lot of time writing and not even the sense that I'm posting on my blog but I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn writing posts because I want my ideas I want my writing whatever I have to say whatever I have to put out into this world to impact someone and I not that I just want it to be good obviously I want my writing to be good but I want it to have impact so I've definitely put my writing into practice and same thing with like other skills. You can't be good at something that you don't constantly practice, Mm -hmm. I don't think. So like growing into creativity and trying to be good at something that you consider creative is you're going to have to work for it. I think because creativity is seen to be sometimes that's something that you're just born with, people don't think it's something that you actually have to work on. It's like a muscle. Yeah, it's like a muscle. Yeah. It's like you've got to work it out or like mm-hmm. it's not going to grow to be as strong as it could be. And this doesn't say you can't be creative without. Like there might be some people that actually can be, but like you probably be much more creative that if you're working out that muscle. Mm-hmm. So I've learned that to be true is like putting your pra- putting your passions into practice to feel that creativity as well. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um but i also think a huge part of like for instance my um journey into creativity is um not just applying the knowledge and skills but um but it's not just about putting your passions into practice but it's applying those knowledge and skills and your creativity in other aspects of your life as well Mm -hmm. i think of it as like an alignment like i want my creativity to also align with the job i have because that's how i will continue to work out that muscle Mm -hmm. would you agree yeah no in the field especially the the amount of time that you're spending in a week um at the job that you have i in hopes if you're a creative person i hope that you do have the ability to you know work that muscle out you know whether you're writing or you know some 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 sort of creative thing, video editing, maybe taking pictures, maybe shooting video, maybe maybe you're an artist, maybe you're um, maybe you do street art or you do graphic design for all these businesses. Like, I think part of what you're passionate about should be should be you should be doing it in your in your job that you're doing. Um, but some people will argue that you know your passions shouldn't be. You should just have a job, just to have a job, and your passions should your job should fuel your passion. 
I remember you told me that. And yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I, I agree saw with this, that. I saw this TikTok the other day. Oh, I got to get off TikTok. <laughs> I just love it. Um, I saw this TikTok the other day that this girl was basically saying that your job doesn't need to be something you're passionate about. It should just be a job to fuel your passions outside of work. But which I can understand what you're saying. I don't I disagree with her, but like agree to disagree kind of thing. Like I had no hate to her. Um, but I think like if for instance, if you're a salary employee, if you're having a salary job, you might work anywhere from forty to sixty hours a week. So why shouldn't that forty to 60 hours a week be aligned with something that you're passionate about because then you have far less time to actually work on the things that you're passionate about Mm. so i think that kind of um view though that that girl had is a little bit unrealistic with how much time we spend working and i mean it's also personal preference too Mm -hmm. like for me i prefer to be engaged with the job i have i want to enjoy it i want to feel like it challenges me i want to feel like it's helping me grow as a person um i mean that's the same it's one of the reasons i don't work in retail like yeah i could have continued working in retail and made okay money and you know but it wasn't something that was going to challenge me and it wasn't something i was going to be passionate about which also led to unhappiness so i think it's ultimately up to what people need in their lives too and some people can live that way you know yeah no i know people going back to my automotive days that it, I think this is where that what she was saying does apply because I know so many people that they they had a day job uh, or salary and employment whether they work for the government or whether they did something unrelated to what they what their what their what their uh, passions were which were automotive and like cars and racing and they would yeah they would use that money to fuel their passion like to literally you know buy gas for their you know their race car yeah. buy car parts and like and that was what they truly enjoyed was like spending those weekends like racing and that i get you know like yeah. i know i know a lot of people in the automotive industry that they do that because that's the only way they can fuel the passion because they don't have sponsors they don't yeah. they're not full-time you know race car people yet but it's just yeah i mean that, that would be a good a good way to use her reasoning i was like i can agree with it on that but then i get i can disagree with it on this so yeah, yeah. i i think it's like by case and like by case scenario yeah. like you know it's dependent upon the person what your wants and needs are everyone has different wants Mm -hmm. and needs and what they want out of their life and their career and some people have a very um separate life when it comes to what they do for work and what they enjoy in their personal life so some people do like to keep that very separate yeah um but i brought it up a little bit earlier but there is much more space to be creative these days it would like not just with like the technology but the apps like tiktok for instance like who would have predicted 50 years ago that tiktok was gonna be so huge or something that like people could make money off of or i think we talked about this in a podcast too um not sure if it's one that's aired yet or not but um people making money by streaming video games like you know playing video games online you know oh actually that's uh that wasn't the first test our test podcast but yeah yeah no that's uh yeah doing whether it's streaming video games like on twitch or or even just people literally watching other people stream it's like the wildest thing they there's like the wildest niches on when it comes to streaming on twitch but yeah i mean they make money again it's not there isn't a lot of people that do it that make money but there's a lot of people that do it either way yeah and then you have youtube you have people who just uh, create content around a certain niche and then you get monetized then obviously sponsors and xyz and advertisement revenue but yeah i mean there's a lot of there is a lot of room for creating and being creative nowadays whether it's applications on your phone that you can download to like design something literally on your phone edit your photos like there's so much There's a way to, like, make your creativity and your passions into your career nowadays, whereas I don't think that was the case, like, even, like, 50 years ago. That was just something, like, even when I was growing up, it was, like, I heard, like, the saying, you know, you're going to get an education or you're going to be working at McDonald's, which is kind of shitty to say. You know what? Or the other thing is uh, you need to... (laughs) You need to you need to you need to go to college or else you'll be bagging groceries. Yeah. But now we all bag our groceries. If you but, um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that I mean, it depends where you but, shop still. I and mean, sometimes you can't even use bags. So like Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. so like you, you don't use your own bag. you gotta bring your own bag. That's so you true. know, that's the reason that you bag them. But like um 
<laughs> they also, I think that's kind of a shitty way to look at things just because, like, for instance, I worked in retail and um, it's it's a hard job. Like, oh, people no. just yeah. think that, like, you know, it's, like, for the lowest people on the totem pole, but it's not. It's truly some of the hardest working people I know work in retail. And that's nothing, I think, to, like, put that in our mm. minds was kind of shitty because, like, you know... Working at McDonald's isn't bad. If that's how you need to get by, that's how you need to get by. It's it's a job. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that any that they have a job, like I wouldn't like. It's just bad. Like to make people seem like that's a low level. It's like mm-hmm. no. Like anyone who has a job, even if you don't have a job, like you know. It's just like I don't know. I'm not making my point very well, but I just think that's a shitty message to send to your kids because then, like for instance, I'll say why it's bad, right? Because like. You're pushing that message like, oh, or you're gonna be grab- you're gonna be bagging groceries, or you're going to, um, you're gonna be working at McDonald's. Well, when the pandemic hit, <laughs> those were the jobs where they needed people because those were the only things you can go they were to you, do. Yeah. And we have people applying because they needed a job because they got laid off, and like those people were f-ing working through a national pandemic and that's hard and no one signs up for that like i didn't sign up for that when i started in retail so like didn't you guys have a shortage too when you used to work at target what do you mean like what didn't you need people because people were leaving or um i think that was towards the end of my time there yeah. but um we definitely were hiring people you know because the grocery stores were the only things open or like some like fast food chains obviously yeah. stayed in business during that time because of the need to um but yeah, I think that's just the wrong message to send to people mm-hmm. is that that's a bad job to have because any job, I think any job can be a good job. It just depends the person too. Some people like, like some people find their careers in those places, like w- moving their way up through those yeah. places. So I think that was a pretty shitty message to send just to yeah. go on a yeah. rant, you know? No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think so too. I think there's a better way to approach something like that when yeah. you're talking to people about like their future yeah Mm -hmm. because there's no shame in working anywhere Mm -hmm. no job is too good for anyone i don't Mm -hmm. think but um yeah i think there's a lot more opportunity (laughs) to get back to it it's a lot more opportunity like i i'm constantly inspired by just people making their way in the world with like the things we now have available for instance there is a woman um, her name is, I want to say her name is Alexandra. She owns a donut shop here in Vegas. Oh, yeah. We've been, it's called St. Honoré and it is so good. They're gourmet donuts. She also is the owner of Cafe Lola here in Vegas, who is now opening like, I think three or four more locations in Vegas. One is on the strip and, um, she uses social media. She has a really great social media presence, which also brings a lot of traffic to her her like restaurants and to her donut shop and that wouldn't have been possible if like this was like 10 15 years ago she would have had to find a different method not to say they wouldn't be as successful they could be as successful but it was much harder i think i mean i still think it's hard to do well on social media like you have to hit the right audience there's the algorithm and all that kind of stuff but it does allow to get your message out there to a wide audience you know so like there's just so much more opportunity um but with that it's also like i think it's still like it's super competitive you know yeah no of course and then even like coffee donuts like when you think of 10 15 years ago you would have never thought i would have never thought of a gourmet donut a gourmet spot donut, yeah you know like coffee at the time you know starbucks and like you know some of the like, corner coffee shops and stuff like that but now it's like there's more like not like luxury type of stuff but more of like very niche like people I think are looking it goes for something to like, unique i think it goes into like the demand of what people want and yeah. like how the world changes and how people's perspective changes for instance i think there is like my one of my favorite things and i don't i think maybe this is true throughout all of time like i love sitting in coffee shops but there's a couple reasons that i love sitting in coffee shops because a lot of time the environment in coffee shops is calming it's nice people are friendly um they have like the interior is like cool to look at and like you know the coffee is good so there's so many things that make it such a great experience i think right now 
people are a huge fan of like experience like the mm-hmm. gaining experiences that are they're gonna remember forever yeah so i think a lot of businesses and a lot of companies are like honing in on that you know yeah no for sure like creating things around experience i think something that comes up when we're talking about like creativity and all of this is um doubt um I know a lot of times, I know I can be, like, I know what I'm good at, and I know the talents that I have, but even knowing that, I doubt myself literally all the time. Like, I have such, like, imposter syndrome when it comes to my talents, and often I feel like, you know, what if I'm actually not talented and I'm fooling myself? Do you ever feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I think imposter syndrome, I mean, once once you told me about what it was, I'm like, that makes so much sense. Um, I think it's something that's common, but at the end of the day, as long as you, I think at least in my opinion, as long as you're confident in what you're doing, and then if you do end up like failing at what you're doing, it's not, not, there's nothing bad about getting back up and like figuring it out to try again, you know? Yeah. Like, I just yeah. think too, I just think I struggle with imposter syndrome because like, I think part of it is that I care what people think so much, but also like, I had this struggle like this internal struggle for the longest time as a kid and a teenager of like what if what i'm good at and what i like don't translate into like what i want to do like and what if i'm not actually good at the things that i like to do oh okay okay yeah yeah and which is such a weird thought to have but i recall having this thought all the time as a kid is like what if i'm not actually good at these things i truly enjoy doing like what if i'm a shitty writer or what if i am not actually like it was also something going into like my new like job like i studied marketing at in college but there was still a lot to learn when i entered the job force of like the marketing industry and i was like I did so much research and I studied a lot and I studied SEO a lot because that was one of like the things I was really interested in. Then when I got a position, I started to feel like, well, what if I'm, what if I don't know what I'm talking about? Like, what if I just feel like I know what I'm talking about, but like, I don't. And that's something that I've had to remind myself, especially because I've gotten results through like what yeah. I'm doing. Oh, so yeah, I'm like, so okay, cool. like I know what I'm doing, but even then sometimes I'm like, do I know what I'm doing? And with SEO, it's so volatile. So, so like sometimes like you'll do everything right and it's not working. So you're like, what do I got to do But there's things now? that you can and can't yeah, control. Yeah, there's things I can yeah. and can't control in the world that I'm in. Um, I'm not doing as much technical SEO as I'm doing like on on page SEO and that kind of stuff for blog articles. Uh, but there's still that fear, you know, like what if I'm not good at this or like what if I'm not meant to be doing this? I think that was my whole thing too is like what if this isn't what I'm meant to be doing and I'm just like wasting my time here? That was always my fear that I had. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fear that I, I've had to before. And even now too is like I mean I remember you t- I remember talking to you about this yeah the other day right mm-hmm. we we're, t- we're just talking about that like is what we're is what we're meant to be doing and then you t- you told me this you said how like what you're doing now is like why not put 100 percent effort into what you're doing now no matter what it is remember yeah you told me about that and I think that's having some having the ability to do something even if it's a job or work like why not put 100 percent effort into that and even if you don't think that it's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, you can hopefully on a time that you have off or or during like downtime you can start learning new skills taking online there's online courses for you to try things in a different field to see oh you know what i actually might like this because oftentimes people will go to school they'll go to college get a degree in biology and then realize like dang i don't want to do i don't want to be a biologist and then they end up being um they end up going into like real estate i don't know like you've you've had stories of people yeah you know, oh no like, i know so many people that like yeah. um i was actually doing an interview this was before i got hired at my current position it was actually when i still was working back at target i was trying to find a job in marketing and i was on in all these marketing facebook groups and this woman I applied to her position because she wanted a like marketing associate basically yeah. so it's like an entry-level position and i made it to like the top eight and then the top four and like she explained to me what her story was and she was a biology major and then like i don't even know what happened but she ended up she ended up in marketing yeah and building websites and all that kind of stuff and i'm like isn't that crazy like how the yeah. world like people just figure out like what they 
want to do isn't what they studied and i think that was my fear too is like going into college is like i didn't want to spend all this money to just not be working in the career that i studied to be in luckily i am working in that career but like there are so many cases where people spend all this money because they think that this is either what they want to do or what they're supposed to do and then it's like oh like let's they realize that you know there's other opportunities out here and I think my thing too is like why I told you to put 100% effort into what you're doing now is because you like what you're doing mm-hmm. now. And right now I think your sh- the struggle with like you is like you're on this creative journey. You want to turn your creativity into something that can be fruitful for you and, and for us. And um, it's not easy and the results aren't always immediate. But... <laughs> I know that by putting 100% effort in versus 50 and 50 on something else, like, you can probably do far better than if you're just, like, half-assing it, you know? Yeah, again. no, yeah. So, like, Ron Swanson, like, don't hold, don't half-ass anything. Don't half-ass two things, whole-ass well, one, one thing. thing. But yeah. I do think if, like, you aren't happy with what you're doing or if you truly feel like you're not in the place where this was your passion about, then put 100% effort into finding what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... Anything in life is hard work. There's nothing in life that comes easy. Um, Even when it's the things that you love, like finding things that you love is kind of hard because it requires a lot of self-awareness. It requires a lot of self-discovery. It requires an understanding of who you are. And sometimes like we're complex individuals. I don't understand myself. I really don't. Like sometimes (laughs) there's things going on in my mind and I'm like, what, Sunny? Like, why are you like this? um so it's a difficult process and i think people sometimes think it should be easy but it's it's just not i've learned that like nothing in life which is so cheesy to say but nothing in life is easy i was actually having a conversation with my dad yesterday um through text and i had told him about like some wins i had at work this week because i was really excited about them and it's always great when i feel like i'm doing well at my job and um <laughs> just drinking this yeah. coffee out of pikachu <laughs> i got that mug from a friend when i was um in college you made Don't a mess of pikachu <laughs> we have to keep that in we will oh my gosh you know what this you got this mug at target i think right no i think you did i didn't buy this mug oh, someone, gave it to you, right? someone bought it for me for my birthday it's a cool mug but it's like the worst to drink out of because it doesn't have a good like well, I don't. I think they're more like um, aesthetic Aesthetics. than they are. I don't think you're supposed to actually drink out of this, but <laughs> can you take the tissue? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, clean up. Sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was talking to my dad, and I was telling him about the wins I had during the week, which is so exciting. And he was like, "Oh, like I'm proud of you, but just be humble. Like, don't brag." And he was like, "I was like, dude, I'm not airing this out to the world. I'm just letting you know because you're my dad, and Loki, I seek validation." <laughs> um, but he was just letting me know, like, um, how he doesn't think that he could make it in the world today as like an, a young individual with the mindset that mm-hmm. he has and he was like you know it's your world now like you got to go and change it he was like i can't make it in today's world because a lot of people are just bragging about like what they do versus letting their work show it mm-hmm. and i actually think that's something that uh, my dad kind of instilled in me is like to work hard but don't go for like the glory you know don't go for don't seek that validation just know that your work shows for itself and don't You shouldn't have to be like, oh, I did this, this, and this, which is kind of like contradictory to how the um, job market is. Like when you're interviewing for a job, you have to let them know, well, I did this, this, and this. You need to brag about yourself. So it's so contradicting, you know, because I feel like, especially since I've gone through the interview process within like the last seven months, like when I interviewed for the job I have now, like that's what you have to do. You have to sell yourself. You have to be like, look, I did this. I know I can do this. So you are kind of bragging, but you have to do so in a humble way. Um, yeah whether it's like creating a, some kind of presentation yeah and presenting it during your interview or like a reel or your website like you do like you, that's why i do kind of understand what your dad was saying in that yeah because like in his generation it was just more of like 
what skills do you have it was all skill based yeah um, like what skills do you have do you have the qualifications for these skills like did you take like you know the 10 hour osha training i don't know like and also i think like my that, dad's you know? so, in the and my dad's worked for his company i think for yeah. like 25 years now so he's been at the company and he's seen it transform yeah and like obviously he's had a huge part in that transformation um but he's also not someone to be like, well, I did this here, you know? Um, mm-hmm. He just lets his work show for himself. And he, you know, yeah. And actually, this is, like, not related to creativity. But I was actually talking to one of my friends. And I think I told you this the other day. Is um, men are actually more likely to go after jobs that they're not qualified oh, for. Oh, told me that, yeah. Because they'll, like, you know, charm their way into it. And I don't know if that's exactly how she phrased it to me. She read a book on it. Um, so she's way more informed on this than I'm just repeating what I talked to her about. Yeah. Um, and then women will actually go after the jobs that they know they're qualified mm-hmm. for. Um, but often, like, you know, those men will get those jobs and not have the experience to match. Like, that they can do the job. And mm-hmm. it's kind of crappy. Overselling. Um, yeah, like, yeah. overselling. And I'm like, what the heck? But... I thought that was crazy. I'm like, you know, I believe that though because I know some people who are full of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you meet people. Like I think, um, just in like I've had a wide variety of jobs. I've started working when I was at um, like sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. And so like from I've been working now for, I can't math. Clearly, I'm not you can't a mathematician. <laughs> seventeen. I'm twenty four. I've been working for how how long is that? That's less than ten years. Yeah. Less than 10 years. Like eight years, right? Well, if you're working since you're 18? No, 17. 17. Oh. <laughs> it's eight years. Eight years. Eight years. So I've been working for eight years, and I've met a wide variety of people, people I love, people I didn't care for so much, um, but people who had different like views on like the work that we do, and um, I've also met some people who just know how to talk out of their butt, and that's frustrating to me just because like just show like what you have to offer versus telling me i'm like i feel like you know it comes back to like oh like a picture is worth a thousand words showing me what you're actually capable versus capable of versus telling me is so much more impactful you know yeah but i don't know how we got on this tangent but yeah um yeah i think it's just interesting that you know I also think it's interesting that like how you're creative in different careers. So I was thinking about this the other day, like accountants, you know, Mm -hmm. people, some people really love accounting, but like what's creative about accounting? And this is not me saying, oh, there's nothing creative. I'm just, I I genuinely thought like how to, and then I thought back, I I have the answer. I gave myself the answer. Oh, what is it? Because I was going to have an answer. And it goes back to a Parks and Recreation episode. Ben works for this accounting firm doing accounting for the accounting oh, firm yeah, yeah. and um, they can't solve this problem. Like they're having trouble with this client that they have and like they're like, well, we've tried solving this problem for months and like they task Ben with solving this problem and he does. He comes up with this really creative solution to make everything work and they're like, whoa. But I think that comes down to it. It's like, again, it's like creative yeah, problem creative solving. Solutions. Like do you have to like find creative solutions? So I think in any, I truly think in any career, just like there's room for creativity, you know? Yeah. I think before though, it used to be like, this is how things are done. We don't deviate from how things are yeah. done, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, there's, I think there's certain, and just, oh, I don't know. I, I, mm, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think there's certain careers and jobs where, yeah, I mean, there is certain ways to do, do things. And like they don't deviate much until unless technology changes, you know. But, but even think of like yeah. doctors, you know, like there are yeah. ways to do surgeries, but they're constantly doing research and stuff to like uncover yeah. like better ways for like healing and that kind of stuff. Or like diagnosing something. And yeah. that's crazy because you're working with real people, man. Yeah, like, real lives at risk and stuff like that. You get sued lives. and all these things, but Medical yeah. Medical malpractice, crazy. Um, but something that also comes to mind when we talk about creativity is imagination. Hmm. I talked about this. I do believe in yesterday's episode that's going to be, you'll probably be out by the time you see this one. Yeah. Um, as episode number three is that um, we are dreamers. Like we're such dreamers. And I think creativity is a lot, has a lot to do with like what you imagine you can do as an individual. What yeah. you see is possible. And I think, I don't think this, I said this in an episode that actually aired, but um, 
the elementary school I went to, we were the Dream Lake Dragons. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dream Lake. Um, <laughs> but their motto was dream, believe, and achieve. And I think that I was kind of just raised to be a dreamer, that like anything is possible. And that also sparks my creativity because I'm not feeling like I'm limiting myself to what I can do. Mm-hmm. I don't think you are. No, I don't think yeah. I am either. But I'm just like, what do you think of that? I mean, like us limiting us limiting ourselves like your imagination and like everything i just said (laughs) sorry uh no i mean yeah no your imagination helps you in like realizing like what you can possibly do it's like you can imagine uh, you know one way when it comes to creativity and imagination is like you can especially when it comes to video editing you have this like uh or shooting a video you have this like mind like you have this vision in your head how you want the shot to be how 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 you want the shot to look and then you have your budget (laughs) <laughs> so it's like that's that's one thing about when it comes to like shooting even like shorts and stuff like that if you don't have the equipment or the but or the budget to make your the shot how you want it like you're gonna just have to work with what you have maybe you just work you with gotta them, use like, your imagination yeah and that's where you use your imagination like maybe like like for example like let's say there's a scene that you want you want it during the twilight hours but the the talent can only come in during the day like obviously how you gonna, how you gonna shoot at twilight if it's during the day <laughs> So maybe you shoot you on a weekend. You get really creative. I don't know. Either you get really creative or you tell the person to come in on the weekend and then or like meet them up on the weekend and then like shoot at twilight where you want to shoot. You know, I don't know. Like stuff like that, that um, your mind can like, you, you know, create something and then like, oh, let me see how it actually looks like. And then maybe it doesn't look how you wanted it. So then you just do something else. You make it look different somehow. But yeah that's i don't know <laughs> you made me think of there's a part in the office and it's like michael in his office i don't know what he's referencing but he's like you know when i was five i drew a unicorn and he's like i'd never even seen one <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's what i think oh of in like God. imagination you know though like you think of i think imagination is like really just not limiting yourself to like what's possible like obviously some people have more running wild like imaginations on others yeah. but i think like with you i think your imagination is pretty like vast and um you're always like thinking of like different creative solutions or how you can get something to look like what you want yeah. given like what you have and but it's also again like it just i think it allows you to not limit yourself to what's possible like mm-hmm. there are so many things that you can do and i think oftentimes people like might not think they can do them but like their imagination i feel like i just always had imagination where it's like I can do anything, but then there's also that doubt, like, can I do anything? Like, you know, it's just crazy back and forth. Um, But there's also a reference that I thought of when we were talking about these um, things is Modern Family. I watch a lot of Modern Family. (laughs) So good. Such a feel-good show. Um, And it's like, there are dreamers and there are realists. Actually, let me look up the full quote, um, because I was looking it up yesterday. Um, and it's like there are dreamers and there are realists you think the dreamers would find the dreamers and the realists would find the realists but more often than not the opposite is true see the dreamers need the realists to keep the dreamers from soaring too close to the sun and i think that's i think that's beautiful and i think also i think that i think it's true because i would say of the two of us you're more creative and you're more a dreamer like i do consider myself a dreamer but i'm also like kind of i also was grown up to believe like this is more tangible yeah Mm -hmm. so i feel like you kind of bring out the dreamer in me but at the same time like i have this foot in like what's possible but you also you just teach me it's kind of contradicting but you also teach me that like to not limit myself and Mm -hmm. to not kind of hold true to what the world thinks is possible because we've seen time and time again how things are possible like the freaking moon landing i mean some people don't believe the moon landing let me just say though i never knew about conspiracy theories until like college like i i used to hear people think i never heard the moon landing was fake until i got to college and then i never heard about like you know the whole like bush did 9 11 like i heard people say in high school and i was like why would people say that and Anyway, I just thought that was weird. Early YouTube. You can, yeah, you can blame I, early YouTube. I, did, I didn't understand that. But <laughs> anyway, stuff, but yeah, um, 
what was I saying? They're talking about uh, dreaming and uh, how you how uh, as how you feel like you're how you feel like you. You weren't listening because no, 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 no. Hold on, no. You're talking about you're talking about dreaming. You're talking about dreaming, and then how you have one foot, like in what's. Oh, but real. I was talking about the moon landing. But, that's, but that's before what that, I, but yeah, I wasn't asking about, before that. Oh, I thought you were trying to get back to the subject because you just went off about the moon. No, because I went. I t- I brought up the moon landing yeah, because that's something that we did. I mean, obviously we didn't. Yeah, do we didn't it, do it, but yeah, but humankind. people did it, and mankind like did. to think conceptualize that is yeah. kind of crazy. Still, like people don't think it's as crazy now because they see all the technology we have, but I still think it's pretty wild. Like the things that we've been able to do or like uncover. So when you see that kind of stuff, it's kind of inspiring and kind of ignites the fire in your heart. It's like, oh, I can do. There are so many things that we're capable of that we don't even know yet. You know. Yeah. No. I mean, I feel. I mean, just you just kind of triggered like a thing in my mind when you talk about the moon landing. I love talking about like space and stuff. It's space. just, it's just, you know, space, the final frontier, <laughs> Star Trek reference. But uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, I think when hum when humans like mankind when we reach for the stars literally reach for the stars <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh or like even you know going back to like the 1300s um when before you know uh people went from what what thought what they thought was the what they only thought what the world was which was before they just dis- not to say obviously people were already here and we didn't discover america people were here already but before they you know paid someone hey uh, give me money so i can take a boat and like i think we think there's land over there you know like think about it there was no technology where we can visually see the they're Ameri- the americas they were going on a hunch <laughs> they're yeah. like there's gotta be something else and people, out there and people have tried it before and died in the process so it's like and it was a big investment back then i think it was was it i forget the, the specific story however yeah i mean like then they discovered not to say they discovered america but then america was was rediscovered i guess but um yeah i was going with this because that continued manifest destiny you know like i remember learning that oh, in, i remember in, uh, learning about that in, uh, shout out to mr russell because yeah, learning that in my school. world history class and no that's a very interesting topic because like i feel like if we as long as there's a goal that we continue to want to like reach that seems impossible i think like a lot of really good stuff comes out of it like if it wasn't for nasa um we wouldn't have the microwave we wouldn't have the x-ray mach- actually we already had the x-ray the mri we wouldn't have like all these t- tools and technologies that like have helped help uh, the help the health industry like yeah so when billions of dollars again billions of dollars were spent like a lot of that stuff trickles down into like other industries because they're able know? to use other people's discovery to see how they can use that yeah. technology in their own work and yeah i mean yeah as long as we continue to do that like i think people again jumping to back to the creativity uh the creativeness of this podcast is that yeah like people got creative and they found creative solutions like how do we get to the moon you know, and then Apollo 13, I believe, was the one that, like, they were gonna, they had failures and they, everybody thought they were going to die. And then they ended up figuring, figuring out a creative way to come back to Earth, like, using what they had on the on the capsule. It's, like, it's insane yeah. to think about that, like, that there are even in dire scenarios that there's creative solutions to, like, save not only yourself, but the mission, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. That makes me think, yeah. though, why we haven't tried to go to other places. Um, like how far have we actually been into outer space? Um, well, we've sent the farthest object that we've sent, I believe, is Voyager two, and it's still going. Um, it's it's like just it's a it was a little satellite that like it it orbited certain planets along the way to take pictures of and send back, but it's just still going. It's just I think it's I forget how far it is. I think it, I, I believe it's already left our solar system, and it's gone like really far. Like. That's fucking- but like i think we've already kind of lost contact with it it's still sending signals out because the nuclear reactor on it like kind of uh, is dying so there's not a lot of power left on it anymore so it's it's only sending signals out every now and then but yeah i mean that's as far as we sent a man-made object but like we as humans haven't gone any farther than the moon so yet elon will send someone to mars probably in my lifetime at least (laughs) maybe in my lifetime but i don't know I don't know, even if you think about, I think recently, maybe not too recently, Mm -hmm. but this was like a while ago, um, someone like had the first picture of a black hole. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, no, that was the that was the first picture of the black hole in the center of the Milky Way, which is our galaxy. 
So yeah, yeah. any black hole. Oh, they had a picture before. That one, remember that one that went viral where that girl was like going like, and there's a picture on the screen. That was a picture of another black hole. But do you remember? You don't remember that? It went viral a few years ago. I just remember that recently they discovered a picture of a black hole. A few days ago, yeah. Not a few days ago. No, there's a re- oh they took a picture of milk. They took a picture no, of milk. No, this was like an hole. article, like. Well, it, was, it wasn't one individual person. That's the thing. It was it was a whole team of people that were collecting data. No, the first black hole. Wow, I my time conception like is bad. So uh, it was a, the reason I know because it was a woman, girl power. Um, yeah. The first the woman behind the first image black hole image. Yeah. And that was in 2019. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about where it's a picture of her going like this. Like she's like covering her mouth and like and she's in shock, obviously. Um, I didn't realize it was so long ago. No, but I'm saying like that's incredible. Like that happened in twenty nineteen, which is fairly still like recent time. Yeah. Like to have discovered, like to have taken a picture or something like that. So it's just crazy, you know, mm-hmm. that what's possible in like our lifetimes. Um, stuff like that always mm-hmm. inspires me. Um I feel good stories of like what we're capable of as human beings and a lot of people will take that too i know sometimes it's like yeah but like i'm not as smart as them i'm not as like you know i don't have the ca- traits that they do but like we're all capable of like great things i think it comes back to like our purpose and what we're meant to do here you yeah know? yeah no, that's true yeah i think uh, again re- reach for the stars you know <laughs> use your mind your creativity to reach for things that you think are impossible and i think that you'll end up creating something amazing out of it that's what i think at least but that's pretty much today's podcast about growing into your creativity and how caesar and i have navigated our creative growth journeys um as you can see we're about four episodes in now to this podcast and there's still so much more to talk about if you guys have any suggestions of what you want to hear what you want us to talk about that's related to growth we pretty much can make anything related to growth there's so many things that impact your growth and your development and the person that you're meant to be there's people there's books there's movies we've talked about that but there's also so many other topics to uncover um so let us know in the comments or if you just like this episode please give this a like on youtube or any podcast streaming platform apple and spotify um but yeah this has been growing together with me sunny vasquez and me cesar santos we hope to see you again next week see you guys later